Hi, I'm Louise Beard from Forward Insight and Strategy and I'd like to welcome you to the NZT, uh, NZCN Tourism webinar series. Um, this is module four of a series of ten modules um, and the webinars are a cut down version of the modules. Um, this program is focused on building value to and from the China FIT market or free independent traveller market. So that's visitors that are coming from China but not in a pre-organised group tour. Um, these modules and the webinar series is part of a larger program um, which um, you can find online at nzcntourism.co.nz. On that website you'll find full reports, um, seminar presentations, modules, top tips and links to social media including Facebook, Twitter and WeChat. Um, if you have been to the module before, do keep revisiting. We are putting up new things all the time and our Facebook and Twitter um, programs are constantly um, being fed um, information into. So hopefully there's something new there all the time. So this module, module four, is around product and experience development. We will be particularly talking about product development overall and um, what specific um, things the Chinese free independent travellers are particularly interested in, um, some information on what sort of cultural experiences um, they would like to participate in, um, some opportunities around Learn2 for this market, briefly talk about the premium market, um, food and beverage related product and um, some response to some concepts that we actually took into the research. The research that underpins these modules was uh, qualitative research and quantitative research. The qualitative research was conducted in New Zealand as well as in China, mainly utilising in-depth um, group interviews. So, developing product. Certainly we have um, an opportunity to deliver great experiences and delivering great experiences will continue to attract high value visitors. Um, what we really um, ideally will do is enable them to get into it, um, to provide transport and guided op options, and make it challenging but easy. Uh, they would like to have things that are really taking them to another level and involving them in a very hands on way. Ensure that we're welcoming um, and deliver service beyond she'll be right, which sometimes um, leaves the Chinese feeling that they're not really wanted. We have an opportunity to um, build seasonal offers and offer tailored choices and layered experiences around product. To build high value experiences for Chinese, it's certainly not all about the cheapest price. Um, our Chinese independent visitors are relatively wealthy, they are wanting to stay for longer periods of time than our group travellers and they are really wanting great experiences. So we have an opportunity shift to shift from a price based focus to very experience based choices and to build um, experiences into must do. Our visitors need to have the why story, why is it special and unique, what are they actually going to do and what is it about it that is engaging and challenging. And in terms of reputation, who else has done it? Um, having recommendations from others um, who have had a similar um, or been involved in the experience really gives confidence to participate. <clears throat> if you'd like to look at the slide in more detail, feel free to go to the module on the website. So what particularly are our Chinese independent visitors interested in? This uh, chart shows that um, on the last visit, the light blue bars, and on the next visit, what people actually did or want to participate in. Um, and you can see that the activities on the left are things that they would like to do more of next time, and the things on the right less of. The two things that are of most interest on the right are food and wine experiences and also cultural attractions. And those are of strong interest on both the last and the next visit. Other things in the middle that people would like to do and will continue to do are gardening experiences or visiting gardens and around a quarter of all visitors want to be involved in that. 
Largely that's around the beauty of our gardens being in the natural environment and the photographic opportunities that they offer. And also wellness attractions. Again, around a quarter of visitors would like to have um, involvement in that sort of experience. On the very left hand side, um, wildlife encounters, particularly seeing wildlife in natural environments is something that our visitors, once they've realised how amazing that is on the first trip, would like to do a lot more on the second trip. Um, air attractions, again, are something that are very difficult to um, do, in, particularly in China where the airspace is, is closed. And so trips on small planes and helicopters is very attractive. Um, boating, fishing, yachting, um, both hands-on learning and participating are of real interest volcanic and geothermal and water activities, and that's on the water, not in the water, um, also are appealing. So a wide range of job interests. Um, one of the things that we're not delivering so well on the right hand side is walking, and that is largely around uh, the way our walks are currently presented, which are often too long and too boring. Walking to experience something, however, is really interesting. Um, special interest opportunities um, fall into experiences on the left that are a part of New Zealand and things that are particularly of interest are outlined there. And then we have some examples of um, anchor experiences that could be developed in special interest theme experiences, which are interest of interest particularly to people um, in China who have um, who would have an interest in doing those things with a real focus, and there are some. So anchor experiences can be quite wide ranging, and um, things that were um, discussed by our visitors is particularly appealing with things like stargazing, whale watching, glacier walks, air activities, um, Lord of the Rings experiences, but also some developmental opportunities, particularly around glamping and being able to get into the environment and there's an opportunity for small experiences, and this is just an example of some, but things like being able to make um, an ice cream, watch the sunrise or sunset, and particularly food um, and seafood related food experiences, um, there are great opportunities for. Support experiences are things like art galleries, museums, the cafe culture, supermarkets and festivals. And although these, though these won't be icon experiences in themselves, they are something that would absolutely add richness um, and provide serendipitous experience for visitors. Anything that is famous and special is particularly attractive, and um, creating something that is famous and special um, is a really good idea. So again, this links into storytelling. Why is this unique? How is it different? And who, who has been there? And why um, would it be um, worth retelling the story? What is special about it? So if anything is the oldest, highest, only, most unique, first, last, um, or biggest, look at how you can actually build that into your storytelling around product. In the modules around special interest, we have detailed information on um, a number of special interest um, areas. Feel free to go to the website and look at that mod any of those modules in, in more detail. And under each of these special interests, we have how relevant it is, what some of the issues could be, areas of risk that might need to be managed, who would be interested in terms of targeting, opportunities um, for development as well. Cultural experiences um, are of interest to Chinese FIT visitors and we, when we look in detail about what sort of cultural attractions do, want, do people want to get involved with, um, the area on the left that is of most interest, particularly on the first trip, uh, is New Zealand local cultural experiences. And this is very much around what is it like to live in New Zealand. Um, it could be experiences around local food tours, um, everything from local playgrounds, local cafe culture, and um, just being in places where locals are and experiencing what it's like. There is um, also in the middle um, a real interest in cultural and lifestyle experiences, um, for example, Victorian architecture and farm stays. 
And this is about understanding um, and experiencing what is unique and special around um, New Zealand. Some of the interest in um, Airbnb and um, bed and breakfast experiences also links into this um, wanting to understand what it's like to live like a local. But we do have um, also in the middle there on the, the second uh, to left uh, line um, wanting to experience local Māori culture and around 10 to 16% of people actively want to make sure that they include that in their, um, their stay in New Zealand. What works best in that area is experiences that are really building on um, real, um, what it's like, real, real, um, real experiences that have meaning for Māori people. Um, museum um, and gallery visits are also of interest and although those figures might look relatively low, when you consider that we're looking at having a million um, annual visitors from China coming into New Zealand per year, those um, figures actually translate into quite high numbers. Um, Chinese, in terms of New Zealand lifestyles, here are some of the things that people would like to experience. Um, everything from local markets, local produce, street side um, food and produce stalls, to local sports games, um, supermarkets, uh, food experiences and leisure experiences. Um, so, for example, visiting um, a beach and seeing what locals do at the beach in summer, um, or walking, you know, to a, um, a volcanic cone or experience a playground or wine culture and festivals all fit in, in this area. Um, for the Māori experiences, um, visitors talked about three different types of experiences. Um, more entertainment type show experiences experiences underpinned by culture, so an experience and an activity that people would want to participate in but with a cultural element and cultural um, authentic stories underlying it, and culturally led activities. The one that had most relevance was the middle one. Um, the entertainment while um, of interest and people would uh, participate in it, particularly in the evening if they had spare time, um, a, as a show um, was often misunderstood and um, certainly there were, um, I suppose, talking past each other um, difficulties in understanding re what was real and what was not real. Um, the culturally led activities, particularly if it's very dependent on storytelling, was often um, difficult un to understand and not particularly tangible. In contrast, an experience, a genuine experience that is around lifestyle, culture and values with an activity focus and an, and a Māori underpinning um, was very, very attractive. Um, and in our fuller report we have examples of what this um, actually would involve. Language, particularly um, for culturally led experiences, and this applies to Māori but also to galleries and museums. Um, while many um, of our clusters of independent travellers, so that small groups of friends or family who are travelling together on an independently planned holiday, generally in those clusters one person will speak English reasonably confidently, but mostly um, others don't um, have that. And if we can provide language through symbols and signs and pictures, pamphlets and handouts, potentially QR code links to translation, so that's a link to a translation that's on, on a website or a link on a website, audio headsets and ideally Mandarin speaking guides can all help with those language options. Um, in terms of learning too, um, Chinese absolutely want to build new skills and experiences and have um, experiences that they um, haven't had before. And there is a real opportunity to um, build opportunities, particularly on second time visits, to um, play, learn to do things and build skills that people didn't have before. And some of the things that could be of interest, particularly for children, are learn to play golf, ride a horse, um, skydive, sail, 
and potentially winter activities like snow experiences and skiing. That is becoming uh, more interesting to Chinese um, as the China has managed to secure the Winter Olympic um, skiing or the yeah, Winter Olympics. Um, so these, what these are, are mini courses um, that would be anything from a part day to a part of a day over a week or more to actually really get um, build skills and sometimes language related skills as well. Um, adults are also potentially interested in learning to cook, playing or improving their golf and sailing experiences. If you're thinking about building a business around any of these areas, you would have to do a proper business case, but certainly um, these are areas of interest that we've been um, talk, talk, um, talk, when we've talked to Chinese, they've communicated. Um, this is an example of um, how a golf academy, academy summer camp could work. And if you're interested in this sort of thing, there is more detail on this on our website in the full China, um, China report. The premium market. Um, anything in the premium market around product development needs to be very dramatic and involving. And there is very, very strong interest um, in combining um, experiences, so mountain-related experiences in golfing, for example, or a range of different, um, quite unique, but very immersive experiences um, over a number of days. Again, these generally will have a social component, so people want to experience them as a group. If you've got premium target markets in mind, um, do, do go to the website and visit the Premium Golf Report, which um, will give you more infora information around premium product development. Um, as with any other um, group, the zero distance immersion, a feeling that you're really in it, you're experiencing it as a unique experience um, that and puts you at the heart of nature and our environment is very attractive. Um, intensity is very important um, and examples of this in across the board are things like skydiving, bungee jumping, platforms over cliffs potentially. Um, internationally there are um, there's a lot of development in glass um, walkways. That's something that our Chinese are particularly interested in. It's scary but not dangerous and um, quite challenging and exciting. Um, Understanding and having a story around product can really also add a layer of intensity and value and interest and many people get as much pleasure from watching as that they do from actually experiencing. And small experiences can also have intensity, listening to birds in the morning or looking at the night sky, dramatic waterfalls, sunsets or sunrises. Um, some examples of food and beverage experience our Chinese visitors would like. A lot of these involve seafood and shellfish. So you can see strong interest in high-end crayfish and shellfish. Um, also um, interest here in unique um, regional seafood stories and experiences. Strong interest in New Zealand um, experiences and stories around those and why they are unique. Wineries and vineyards around 13% want to participate in that, and fresh experiences like farmers markets. So again, if you're interested in this, you can look in at more detail in the report. Um, this talks about the concept of new fresh, very much around zero distance from farm or seed to plate, and having um, interactions with the actual produce is really important. Um, Asian styles, um, cuisine that has got Asian styles any sort is um, enjoyable as part of the overall experience and also New Zealand um, experiences which are really helped by sharing plates and seafood and lamb are the most desired. We again have a whole module on food and beverage if you're particularly interested in this area. Um, some top tips there, mini bars, putting instant noodles in, self catering, very strong interest warm water, a preferred drink, and providing thermoses of warm water would be appreciated. Eggs work very well, and milk drinks, um, milk is enjoyed to be drunk straight. A pantry box will help with self-catering, 
and um, anything to do with self-catering to enjoy our produce with Asian flavours would appeal. Um, some opportunities to develop must do national food experiences and also regional icons. And with any experience, very important to have um, a story that involves the backstory, the source, where does something come from, the environment, what's special about that, the people and experience. Um, a small bit here about ice cream, and it, it, this explains um, you know, why ice cream is important, but again it's about building up layers of experience and creating something that can be told to others. Food ordering isn't always easy for the Chinese and a QR code can help not just with food but in general. Product development, um, this is um, really around um, the developing product fits across um, these modules but is particularly down here in this area at the bottom. This is the Lean Canvas, it's a plan on a page. Each model will help you if you are interested in following up on these to build up a picture of how to deliver to not just the China market but any target group that you have. We have a number of tools that you might like to use to help build up your product portfolio and look at, in terms of product about how you build awareness, value and experience, how you extend what you already have and how you develop a new product. Um, you can also use this um, product development plan to review what you have, what your product development plan is and how you, you're developing a communication plan in terms of enabling people to find you and be inspired by what you have. If you would like more information, go to our website and uh, also um, look up the Enablement Partnership list.